So hello everybody, good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Vladimir Schulz. I am uh, one of the owners of uh, Microis, founding member of IQRF Alliance. The name of my presentation is uh, Internet and Things, Nirvana is Far and Close. As you can see from, uh, from my first slide, okay, <clears throat> you can see puzzle and uh, that's exactly because uh, Internet of Things at the moment is a big puzzle and uh, IQRF is just small piece of that big puzzle. So what we will discuss today? Uh, as I mentioned, uh, topic is Nirvana is far and close. That's a little bit problem because a lot of people is thinking IoT is already here. Some people uh, know that uh, it's too far, so where it is. I will shortly introduce MicroS, IQRF Alliance and the technology. And uh, in the end, I will introduce IQRF zones, which is uh, the purpose also of our technical uh, new questions. So first, uh, IQRF Alliance. IQRF Alliance is an alliance which is based on uh, interoperable products. This is extremely important because uh, most of you already met a lot of nice technologies, for example, Zigbee, and then you recognized, okay, this Zigbee device is not talking to other Zigbee device. That's a problem. And it would happen. It's uh, about com communities and, of course, about promotion. Uh, Microrisk is Czech technological company oriented to manufacturers. So it means that our customers are always manufacturers of some products. We are a company with, I think, good and nice visions. Uh, I should say that we are an innovative company, which would be demonstrated by a number of patents, which is close to 40 at the moment. Uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of scientific awards. You can see also our great staff, not completed, because uh, we are distributed over the whole Czech Republic and also in uh, next countries. And here you can see our research and technology center in Yichin and uh, that red area, especially that big area, which is Russian, is uh, where we are active in the world. When we are talking about uh, IQRF, we can say that uh, at the moment it's a huge ecosystem for building IoT. So you can find there transceivers, uh, software, communities, technologies, protocols, gateways, and many more. Okay, so where we are at the moment. In the same begin, there were just simple devices. With our transceiver modules, we enabled those devices to talk together. Then we added operating system, and everything was much easier for customers. Finally, we added IQ Mesh Network, and we enabled those things in this case, it's smoke detector and some uh, siren. Talk together and cooperate together. Finally, because uh, we, we are not a Chinese company, which is manufacturing one million pieces and uh, forget it in somewhere in the market, we should build, it, build up everything from the scratch. So we prepared very nice development tools at the moment consisting from many sets, kits, shields, software tools. We prepared uh, IQRF ID, extremely nice tool for, in the beginning only for programming and project management, at the moment also for backing up, restoring, uh, over the air programming and so on. With uh, our DCTR modules, it means uh, data controlled modules, we enabled customers uh, to make things connected without programming. This is extremely important. 
because uh, with hardware profiles which are ready to use pieces of software, uh, customers just use it that without programming. And of course, we arranged uh, interoperability. With uh, IQF SDK, we added uh, next, le next leg for IQRF, especially for higher layers of the system, gateways and connection to the clouds. At the moment, uh, customers can uh, connect through IQ directly to IQRF cloud, but also because uh, with the concept of open gateway, it would be any cloud. Uh, of course, you can see that uh, green, that uh, all software pieces are completely free and open for our customers. What is more important is not component view, but features view. So what we are doing at the moment, IQRF enabled things to talk together, understand to each other and cooperate. This is something what we are doing. IQRF partners, all of you, especially those uh, who are manufacturing something, are utilizing our technologies and helping those things to talk together. And uh, finally, uh, you are making our lives better. With IQRF, we are on the market already 12 years. It's, it's a long time. During that time, we have seen in the market a lot of bubbles, a lot of technologies. And uh, I can say that uh, in the wireless market, we are really one of the eldest parts of the market. Okay. <coughs> Uh, we have extra low power. I will explain it uh, later on. It means that our applications and products utilizing and deploying uh, IQRF can run on batteries many years. But uh, we are not uh, hiding what we are doing and uh, the best comparison is always to use correct comparison. It means for example, that for one AA cell, uh, 2.4 ampere hours, uh, we can send 500, 500 megabytes. Some other competing technologies with packets transferring 12 bytes and having six seconds for sending those 12 bytes can run on the same battery, just for a comparison, five kilobytes. So 1,000 slides. And those companies are saying, hey, we are extra low power. So I should mention also reliability and robustness, because this is uh, something what we are proud on it. Sorry for technical difficulties. And uh, it's good also for real-time <laughs> operation. And of course, because we are wireless, you will see more in tomorrow technical session. Uh, we are very concerned by security because uh, we are sharing RF with everybody else and we should be even more secure than anybody else. So where are we going to? I will introduce today IQF zones. Uh, this is something new for most of you and this is combination of robustness and reliability of IQ mesh networks. To, uh, with fast responses in star topologies. I believe you will like them. Of course, uh, we will continue uh, to extend IQ, IQF DPA support, the same for IDE and IQF SDK, while IQF SDK will be more and more used to open our upper layers for gateways, for other products and clouds. Next year, we would like to be not only a manufacturer of uh, transceiver modules, we believe that uh, that year, I mean 2017, we will be a manufacturer of DCTR chips and there will be more manufacturers which will consequently lead to decreasing prices of modules. 
And of course, uh, I should mention IQF Alliance. We founded the Alliance two years ago. I am really happy that it's nice growing. But uh, we should make Alliance a real alliance. So not dependent on Micris. We should be still founding mem member. But uh, we think that it would be much better if we move IQF Alliance to be a real foundation. And finally, uh, we should talk about industry 4.0 because uh, we already installed that uh, in uh, our manufacturing. Thanks to Hinek, thanks to Easy Lokai, my colleagues who implemented completely new tooling, helping our productivity because especially last months we got uh, in troubles with uh, deliveries. We weren't able to deliver everything what you ordered uh, in time. <coughs> So with uh, that new tooling, I believe that our productiv productivity will be 20 times higher. And I should mention that uh, IQRF DPA, it means that basic protocol making things interoperable will go through the whole ecosystem, from things, through gateways, through protocols, up to final devices, smartphones and tablets. So. When we are talking uh, about uh, technology, of course, I should repeat, it's a huge ecosystem for building IoT. Because uh, we have lack of time, I will skip uh, that interactive presentation and I will go on. If anybody else would like to get more information, it will be available tomorrow. Newton's cry. Well, if uh, somebody say physics, Physics for me is Newton and Einstein, of course. So in my uh, working room in the company, I have picture of Einstein because I like him. And uh, but for that, everybody knew Newton. Why I mention that? I mention that because at the moment uh, there is a lot of uh, things and consideration and mistakes which are using exactly that machine. This is perpetually moving machine, something what is impossible to get. Because especially in the world of uh, IoT, there is a lot of perpetual, perpetually moving machine, perpetual mobiles. And uh, let's talk about them. It's a nice world of bubbles. Usually, when you visit some uh, IoT conference, there is a lot of IoT conferences. Then you will see a lot of experts. Uh, two weeks ago, I read article from Martin Mali, who is uh, one of the very good and famous uh, bloggers in Czech Republic, technical bloggers. And uh, he mentioned, well, I visited few IoT conferences and there were always the same people. Usually it was some salespeople who never touch IoT, but they were able to talk about that. So they were, they were well trained and were able to talk about that. And of course, you can see the reason, because uh, at the moment everybody expects big revenues, big market from IoT. So. Uh, IoT flooded our world. Uh, you can see that it's on billboards, it's written in newspapers, magazines, and even totally stupid things like bells have sticks over them, IoT. It's something what is phenomenon of uh, this, these days, and we are completely overwhelmed by IoT. And uh, there is a big world of bubbles. And you know how it is with the bubbles. In the beginning, you are going up and you, are, you have nice aura of bubble. Unfortunately, the world is full of dangerous things like pins and needles. And it would happen that uh, it's even bad. So I asked uh, my colleagues to buy something for making bubbles and I was surprised I got this one. <laughs> I saw it first time <laughs> 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 
and I, I was uh, looking how it works, and it works nice. <laughs> so you can see there were a lot of bubbles. So, uh, and if you see most of those bubbles, okay, all bubbles came down. So uh, let's go a little bit deeper and uh, let's see some uh, technical things and uh, sometimes dreams, sometimes curiosities. One curiosity or maybe dream number one would be that our Mr. Experience, Mr. Omniscience, knowing everything, is saying that his technology fits to every need. It's nonsense because if you can imagine any technology, it wouldn't be like that because every, every need, doesn't matter if it is monitoring, control, streaming, data acquisition, has totally different requests what the technology should know, should do. Of course, salespeople should sell the technology, therefore they are saying, okay, our technology is the best, buy it. Uh, engineers don't like to have problems because uh, if something is wrong, it will go to their heads. And uh, therefore they are saying, well, you should choose it. So they are a little bit uh, saying to the salespeople, okay, please slow down a little bit. What I am saying, uh, some technology can be the best in the meaning the most convenient, but of course only for some specific application. For sure there is not any universal technology. And uh, what we believe in is that we should have, everybody of us should have freedom to choose best fitting technology, to choose it. So, at the moment, we have a lot of wireless technologies in the world. We can discuss Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. Of course, if you connect uh, like that, you will use Wi-Fi. If you have uh, some wearings, you will use Bluetooth. Uh, if you have uh, some industrial applications, you will use uh, GPRS or, L or LTEs. Uh, there are te new technologies like Sigfox and LoRa. And if you like to monitor small rivers somewhere in the mountains, you can use it. It's uh, almost low power. It's uh, best fitting to the technologies. If you like some robust applications, you have IQRF, you have Zigbee. Next dream or myth is something uh, that our Mr. Knowing Everything is saying, hey, our technology is super extra low power. What does it mean? extra low power. Uh, there are a few problems. The first problem is that there is no fixed terminology. What is it extra low power, super low power, ultra low power? I think it was four years ago at Electronica in Munich. Uh, we had, we introduced our IQ mesh and told, and there were a lot of customers coming to our booth and asking, hey, are your transceivers low power or extra low power? I thought, well, I don't know. But take a look to the opposite booth. Uh, it was written extra low power. And uh, on that opposite booth, uh, there were also written extra low power, three milliamps. I thought, well, I don't know if it is extra low power, but take a look to those three milliamps. This is extra low power. We have 100 times less. So it's maybe better. Next problem are comparisons. Because uh, you can compare something what is not comparable. For example, a lot of new technologies nowadays are comp comparing their RF technologies with high sensitivities, with LTE, with current LTE. And this is not correct pr uh, <coughs> comparison because uh, first it will change, there is different usage and so on. Next, I saw also a lot of nice pictures of products operated for several years on really big batteries. Okay, this is also not a uh, good comparison. And for example, if you count some correct, something what is sending uh, 100 times higher times, it should have higher consumption. Uh, next, next dream, uh, it would be myth, maybe dream, who knows, is that 
higher power and higher sensitivity is our nirvana, that it solves everything. It's, again, just a mess. It's not correct. Why? If you see our Mr. Signal, and Mr. Signal has obstacle, then he will go through, but you will see that miss our <coughs> Mr. Signal is slower and slower by each obstacle. And uh, if we put a little bit bigger obstacle in front of him, of course, it won't be possible to go through because it has no power to go. In real life, it would be like that. A lot of our buildings are, have metallic parts, iron parts, inside, especially in warehouses. If you like to communicate, uh, for example, to water meters, it would be a problem to get it. And that's just a reality, just a physics, therefore that's Mr. Newton. Well, there is solution. Of course, it's our well-known IQ mesh-based networks because uh, you c if you cannot go through, you will go around. So this is principle of mesh networks. And again, you saw it many times how we showed you how it is spreading. So, at the moment, it's a time to introduce IQRF zone. IQRF zone is something what, we, what will connect the best from two worlds, from star-based networks and IQ mesh based networks. At the moment, uh, we have existing technologies, usually around TCP IP environment, Wi Fi, IPTV, GPS, LTE, Ethernet, just a major. We have some new technologies and uh, we have also some old technologies, old, 12 years old. You can see that uh, the problem of those technologies and existing infrastructures is that not everything can fit to each requirement. There are problems between power consumption and uh, requests to be battery operated, higher lat latencies versus fast control, and so on. So we added, uh, we added uh, to the ecosystem also IQF zones, which are connecting the best from uh, from mesh technologies, it means reliability and robustness, together with fast responses from star-based networks to be even more low power. So what kind of application it would fit? I prepared that based on convenience of the usage. So of course I should start with smart, <coughs> with smart cities. Uh, in smart cities, of course, it will be parking system, waste management, public environment monitoring. So exactly what Shimon told, because, uh, and what you will see in uh, next presentations, <coughs> it's suitable for that. And of course, automation and control. When uh, you can monitor solar plants, manufacturing automation, data centers, industry 4.0. We cannot omit uh, smart homes, it's about comfort, it's about uh, making our lives better. Uh, of course, we cannot forget to rural areas. We are talking about automation, uh, manage measurement and control. Uh, next big fit is automation. From hotels, through warehouses, up to industrial fields and uh, in the future, nowadays we got it from Italy uh, and also from other countries. Uh, you can see this is uh, so-called uh, system of dead man. Uh, not only if you have uh, dangerous chemical plants, but also anything would happen. And you can monitor people uh, to get to provide more safety. I will repeat one again, uh, smart home. In this case, it will be for security, alerts, and control. And I think that the fastest growing in the same begin will be smart grids. Because uh, European Union told, okay, you should provide telemetry for power meters, water meters, whatever. And you should measure that. But smart grid is not only measurement. Smart grid is especially about consumption of 
the power exactly in the clusters where it was manufactured. Therefore, we cannot omit not only getting data, data acquisitions, but we should also control the whole, the whole grid. So when you see it, uh, you got, uh, you got uh, together IQRF and IQRF zones, complete ecosystem, uh, products running IQRF can run also IQRF zones. What is important for me is that each device can choose the provider. The provider would be some company or consortium which built communication infrastructure for IQRF zones, or it would be some gateway or zone controller you will buy for 40 euros. Next, uh, each, each zone controller can choose service provider. It means that it's independent on uh, cloud service. So there is Azure, there is Bluemix, uh, some clouds providing just a storage. It would be OpenStack or our, our IQRF cloud. Finally, customers should be able to choose also applications, not be dependent on one application. And uh, making our IQRF zones running, it's easy. And it would be realized in three simple steps. In the first step, you will just prepare basic tooling. There are no drills needed and so on. So just screwer, spanner, mobile phone. Of course, you should read manual. It's available also in PDF. And you should screw the terminals, check the polarity, that's all. Those of you who know me a longer time for sure know that I'm kidding right now because you don't need any tooling. The only what is true is you need only three simple steps. First step is you just log on to IQRF Cloud. You can register or log. You will add your device to your account and you can use it immediately. And of course, because the world is full of geeks and people who would like to play, there are also some optional geeks options available. Okay, so we should prove it. So I should find some dummy user. Okay, Shimon. <laughs> Mr. Salzman, I will give it to you. Okay, Shimon. So you should lock, try to lock to your account. As you can see, we already tried to prepare that for you. <laughs> I forgot that our dummy user needs mouse. No? <laughs> I'm good. We will see if the internet connectivity is working. There is internet connectivity, yes. There we go. Yeah, okay. so I'm in. Okay, so we just log at uh, to the to customer's account. We should add device. On each product, you can see a QR code and some number. So just put there 81.00.8a.f6. Those of you who are a little bit experienced in uh, numbers know that we are a little bit limited in Internet of Things supported currently to 4 billion. I believe it will be better in the future. Okay, so we have there Luminar. So now click on that red. Uh, we can uh, we have our own name there. Let's go to there and you can see that 
Immediately when it was uh, switched on, so it started to operate, so there are already some data. So you can see that uh, there are already some data. We can uh, use some actions because this is Luminar. So let's turn it on. I think it should be that light. And you can go for... There we go. Okay, you cannot go for T. So uh, it was already running, nevertheless a uh, little bit delayed. So let's switch it off. So this is the way how I can control my light on my terrace, right? Exactly. So, okay, exactly. that's cool. And can we do it somehow automatically? So I don't have to. Okay, so in this case, we should add uh, we should add also some other devices, some uh, sensors. So let's go to my devices. We already okay. prepared from our basic tools uh, just. This is sensor, sensor of the light. And in this case, Simon, you can look uh, in this to the same account from your mobile phone okay. because there is QR code. Mm -hmm. And our dummy user will click on that QR code. Hopefully. Hopefully. Our hands are shaking, okay. but yeah, I'm in. Yeah, okay, so now I edit a new device, a sign. All right. So just actualize. Now I will refresh this. That's F5, right? As a dummy user. And we are there. <laughs> and that's so it. We that's got cool. we, we got our photo photo meter. And uh, then if you like to automate it, just go to actions. But at the moment we are already in the geeks option, so this is not yeah. something what so everybody will I'm do. I'm advanced so user now, not the dummy user. Okay. So if the exposure is higher then 500. It, it means it's enough light, turn it off. All right. And that action. And you can put uh, second option, second action. If it is lower than 480, just to get some hysteresis, turn it on right. at action. Uh, go to actions. Uh, okay, my devices go to Luminar. Turn it right. on. Okay, so I have to have it like manually turned on to be able to, to start the automation. All right. Okay, clear. Okay, so the light should get switched on. All right. And you can see, hopefully, because this is techniques, not every time working. If the light is higher, it would make it. We can, auto right, we can cool. automate it also. So this is also some kind of automation. <laughs> <laughs> so please turn it off. <laughs> All right. So this is the perpetual mobile, right? That you said <laughs> before. Exactly. All right. OK. That's cool. Yeah, that sounds promising, actually. Thank you. <laughs> So, we hopefully prove it. So, and uh, I believe that in the future it will be even easier. As I started, IoT is big puzzle. And IQRF are just few pieces of that puzzle. But uh, we know where are we going to. We would like to make things easier. And what is the most important for me, we have a great staff of people and we believe in and love what we are doing. So, almost in the end, the topic is Internet and things and Nirvana. So with all those bad things, we should say Nirvana is quite far because Nirvana is highest level of, uh, of the spirit freedom and of course, with such a things, we cannot get it. Once we have option to have everything free, open, when we have freedom to choose service, connectivity, providers, when we have built and are working on this puzzle, 
And we can say, Nirvana is far and close. So, thank you.